Hi, and welcome back to the Crit Hit Wild podcast, where we talk about all things Marvel Crisis Protocol and review a different character every week. I'm your host, Jared. I'm Brad. And I'm Fred. And uh, we hope to to be joined by Brandon at some point. He he may be sleeping or just forgot. We don't know. But we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out eventually if he if he joins us. At some point, uh, he's he pop, he's popping in enough. I need to get like the uh, like the old school like Pokemon uh, sound bite. Like whenever you run into him in the grass, or they just like show up. That's what I need to <laughs> just play that every time he comes in. But uh, I I know yeah. for a fact Brandon would appreciate that. I know that he would too. I was telling him I for Christmas I got my daughter. Uh, I actually bought his old Nintendo Switch. Like we never had one. I got her that, and she got uh, Pokemon Violet. Uh, for Christmas and she's been playing like the shit out of it. And it was like, I got hit with like such nostalgia. Cause I'm pretty sure like I probably was like nine when I really got into Pokemon and like, I was playing my first game and this is, she's played like Pokemon TCG a little bit with me. This is like the first Pokemon like game, like video game that she's played. And just like watching her go through like the stress of picking your starter. <laughs> when you have like three was hitting me with like such nostalgia. So it's been great. So then I started playing it. Cause she started getting me into it and then I've been playing the absolute fuck out of it. So I told Brandon, he was like, all right, what's your Pokemon? And he really got into it. So I know that he would in fact really love that. I think he even had well, that. That's, that's great. Uh, that sounds like a, a, a hell of a lot of fun for your daughter. Oh, like me and her have been having a blast, like nonstop. And like every day, like, she gets home from school, like, before I get home from work. And so she gets home from school, we let her have, you know, time on her Switch for a little bit. And then, like, as soon as I get home, she's telling me, like, what she caught. She's showing me where her team is. She's showing me what evolved. It's It's been a blast. So I've been having a lot of fun with it. But uh, This is this isn't a Pokemon podcast, so this is a, this is a Marvel podcast. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, before we... We're nerds, <laughs> we're nerds, and we can talk about Pokemon if we want to. That's true. We can nerd out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I What's guess a Pokemon? It, Oh, shut up. Oh, that upsets me. I know for a fact that you have a, a, a lot more knowledge about Pokemon than even I do, Brad. Brad likes Pokemon. I know for a fact. I know for a fact. You do, and you're hiding it. You're hiding your knowledge. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess if you're listening to this podcast and you play Pokemon Scarlet or Violet, I would love to know what your starter was. I chose to go with Fuecoco. What would you say you went with? Did you want to go with That's the thing? correct answer. Uh, I also went with Fui Coco. Yeah, that one it's, is it's the correct answer. I don't know. My uh, although I think that Ghost Fire is not exactly a very good combination. I, I don't think that's a good combo. I who like cares? It. It's the coolest looking one. It is the coolest looking <laughs> one. My daughter went with uh Sprigatito. Is that is that the first evolution? Is that right? Or is that the the base form? Correct. Yeah. The the uh, the the grass cat. Yeah. That was a runner up for me. Like the the yeah, gator is, is cat. It's not a pothead cat. Well, I mean technically it is, I guess, when you tear it. It it actually is literally a pothead cat. <laughs> There's it? she, the final evolution has a pot on her head, I think, with a uh, flower coming out of it. That was actually like really funny. Uh I think I was in uh the bedroom and I was like straightening up our room and I heard Audrey scream from like the living room. And I was like, she, she was like yelling. She's like, oh my God. And we were like, what the fuck is going on? And we were like, what's wrong? She was like, I have a Meowscarada. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what's going on. <laughs> Hit the final evolution. So, so excited. Uh, anyways, how have you guys been? How's your week been? Uh, I've been I've been doing good. It's been uh, a rainy week, which is always fun in my job. But it's been fine. All right. How about you, Brad? Yeah, it's been fine. Um, we are recording this, uh, a little bit late, so depending on editing, I'm currently on day four of nine for my work, so I'm going to try to get this edited quick. I usually say I'm going to, but usually I don't, but hopefully we can get this up. We record on Saturday. Hopefully we get it up, you know, Sunday or the latest Monday. So if you're listening to this, it is every time that this comes out late, it is my fault. So if you want to yell at me in the comments, I'll allow it. So, um, but yeah, uh, this week is going to be our Spider-Woman uh, episode, so we actually now have uh, a good bit to, to cover as far as new characters go before we kind of double back on some of our uh, viewer requests. Uh, I believe we have Spider-Woman, and then next week should be um, Beta Ray Bill. Yeah, Beta Ray Bill. I know a lot of people are excited for him. I have 
reviewed the card. We're, we're not going to give any. We won't. We wouldn't even give any hot takes. But uh, did you guys have a chance to review the card? Yes, I have. Okay. I have not seen it yet. You haven't looked at it yet. Okay. Uh, how there, could I have? How could I have not looked at it and put it on Cerebro? Did no, take that there. You no, no. You could have put it on there, but not read it. You know. So you, you would have seen it, but not I read, it. read it. Okay. That would take an impossible amount of self control. I think Brad has a lot of self control. Actually, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, probably right. Out of everybody that is in this call, Brad probably has the most self control, I think. Mm. Interesting. I, I probably agree. I probably agree. Yeah, I have like I probably have the worst. I have close to like no self control. So. Uh, the, you're talking to a person who is eating a Kit Kat right now. <laughs> What what is it? Is it a king size or is it regular? No, no. I I just got a a bag of the of the little ones. Brad, I don't know. I don't know that I'm much better. Do you know what I had for lunch? What did you have for lunch? Pizza place pizza. Oh, and I, really? And really? I ate, and I ate four slices of the thick crust. How are you alive? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> how, how are you not asleep right now? <laughs> That that is a a thick and delicious pizza. I I had that uh, actually. I think it was uh, back in December. I was able to eat there again. That place was really good. It is very good. What is it? Pizza place pizza. It's in Parkersburg. Uh, oh, is that, that's the place you're always telling me about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna Parkersburg eat there. It's so good. Yeah, I'm going to. I swear. Like if, if there's they. Have a tournament, which I guess they won't have an MCP tournament, so I'd have to go to. Wow, well, we'll but... see. Okay, well, well see. If that ever happens, I will definitely, I I will buy the pizza for everyone. <laughs> that is in this call. I, I said that. To... I, I said that. <laughs> I'll buy it for everybody in this call. I can't. I can't be <laughs> buying it for twenty people. So. <laughs> well, All right. I just, uh, I'm pretty sure Les listens, and I I just want to shout out. Um, Les and uh, Andrew Savage. We hit, when I went to the tournament in Pennsylvania when Fred and I went. Mm-hmm. Andrew bought the pizza and Les brought like a bunch of terrain. So, oh, you nice. homies are cool. Yeah, nice, a, a real class act. That's from awesome. Both yeah. of them. those guys are awesome. Yeah. Like I, yeah. every time that I've ever like been around Les, I'm like, my God, he is just a fantastic person and like a great player. Like I've I've had nothing but like the most fun when I played Les. So, I yep. I think never mind. I was gonna say I don't know if I played Ant, uh, Savage, but I did play him one time uh, at a, a tournament in uh, Morgantown for War Machine, and mm. he was absolutely wrecking me so bad. Like it was probably some of the worst I've ever like been beaten. I had like very few characters left. He had Fiora next to an avatar of uh, Avatar Minoth, mm-hmm. so I had to go toward him. So I was like, there's literally nothing that like, I can do to try to get out of the situation. And he had Fiora on full camp. And I just like feeded with Asphyxius. And I think by the time I got my last attack through, I needed to roll like an 18 on my dice to, to kill her. And I happened to roll the 18. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit yeah i felt so terrible about that like our old i was like oh my god and this, i think somebody else was saying they're buying they're like oh my god and they walked away and then andrew looked at it and he looked up he's like an 18 he was such a good sport about it <laughs> but i really yeah. like that guy all right um yeah so uh like i said this week is going to be spider woman so before we get into any of that uh we have News and announcements. Uh, one of the news uh, announcements uh, again was you know they they talked about Beta Ray Bills coming out and then Ulick. Am I saying that correct, Brad? Is that the? Uh, I don't know. Probably. He's another big boy that's coming in the Beta Ray Bill box. So uh, everyone, you know, we're pretty confident that Beta Ray Bill is going to be an Asgardian. We're not, I'm not. I don't know shit about the other guy. So I think actually uh, in our last video, uh, Mitch Cohen. I think he. Talk, is the last video of the little video before? Mitch Cohen actually had a pretty good description of, of Ulick in there. He said that he should probably be on a on a large base, but I think there's actually put some lore stuff in there too, so thank you, Mitch. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, let's go on to Cerebro. Do you have any updates for us as far as how uh, going? Yeah, I put out another update to the app. We're getting closer and closer every time to it being released, but 
this one i mean it's kind of boring but i added a button to like sync the card data and i started working on more stuff to make it work offline okay all right well, uh, again, if you are listening to this cast and uh, you don't support Brad on his Patreon, which you can find the link to every time that you open up Cerebro, shame on you. You should donate him at least a dollar because he works very hard on it. And he makes sure – I mean, you're the quickest in the business, right? I don't think that there's any dispute to that anymore as far as, like, um, getting stuff up as soon as we know about it. It. I don't really use the other ones, but it does seem like I have stuff up there quicker than – uh oh i think your record is like i've okay. had it within like seconds yeah it's so fast <laughs> yeah like we got a leak and you immediately head in there so i mean he's the quickest he's got the fastest upload <laughs> i don't know it, it in the west longer it takes longer now with the character thumbnails than it used to because i have to make the thumbnail real quick i mean it takes you but... you know five minutes instead of seconds i think that we can let that yeah. one slide you know what i mean so uh, but yeah, uh, feel free to go over and help support Brad on Patreon. He'd really appreciate it. So, um, so uh, moving forward, I'm uh, going to do things uh, a little out of sequence because I, I can't, for whatever reason, my phone's not opening up my notes to get my question correct. Do you guys want to go over your game that you played this week? Because I know that you and Fred both played a game of MCP against each other. Two games. We played two games. We played yeah. two games against each other. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, the first game, uh, I played Malekith under the Malekith, uh, leadership and, uh, it didn't go well for me. <laughs> uh, I believe Brad was playing, uh, uh, the Weapon X affiliation with Logan and, uh, Sabretooth. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and I, I was playing Malekith, uh, uh, I don't even remember who the rest of my team was, but they were not very relevant, uh. There was. Do you want to describe the turn? <laughs> there was a turn oh, that was yeah. really, um, really bad for me. I've had some. I've had some pretty good luck with my weapon X lately. Um, and the, but this was this was another level. So Logan had already dazed Hood, and then the next turn he killed Hood, dazed Malekith. And then Sabretooth went and dazed Baron Zemo and Omega, Omega Red. Red. Yeah. Like, and that, uh, in it does activations. two activations. I mean, yeah. that's, that's and, disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I had nothing on the table that was active, and he had three more characters to activate. Yeah. It was very bad. <laughs> uh, so that game did not go well for me. The, the next turn, the next round... I did actually start having a bit of a comeback because Malekith essentially went on the warpath and dazed multiple characters, but yeah. it was nowhere near enough to come back from that. There was no coming back from a turn like that. Uh, but we played a second game after that game. This uh, game did not go so well for me. No. Oh. Well, uh, you won, but it was a much closer game. It was much closer, and uh, Malekith throwing my Sentinels into models sucks. Uh, it sucks. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah. uh, it happened... Uh, uh, how many rounds did that game go? I think it went four rounds, and I threw... Mm -hmm. I threw uh, a Sentinel into another model three of the four rounds. Yes. It yeah. it was very good. <laughs> I played I played like the fluffiest list. I played three Sentinels and Cassandra Nova. Okay, yeah. So uh, how, I, how did you like that? Playing all I, that, I liked it. See, I, I think it would be pretty good. Like that's always yeah. on paper. That's what I've always thought. I just haven't yeah, tested it, it out was yet. But. Pretty good. If he couldn't throw Sentinels, that would have been a very different game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, uh, and and I'll tell you what the last throw that I did was a throw of a sentinel into Cassandra Nova, and Cassandra Nova does not care. Yeah, she yeah, just, that's true. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and like the tow great. cable, the tow cable works with her like do damage to you and short move away mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Like, there's so much synergy in there, and her cards great with them, and it it worked really well. I, I liked it. I've always like I like her. It's just hard. 
for her to like get plugged into certain things when you have things like Modoc and other stuff. But I think that her being affiliated is really good for Sentinels, and I think that she has like a really good home with them. So yeah, I, it, there was also that good. card, that card that uh, made your shields count as hits, as wilds. That was. Oh, as wilds, yeah. It's important that, that they're wilds for the triggers, but also so they still count on defense. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that, and that was a very... when The turn you did that was a very effective turn for her. Yeah, it was. I still have uh, dreams. I still dreams of playing that card with Corvus Glaive reality so that <laughs> everything counts. Every, every, your dice are just always active you don't yeah. even have to roll them well you have to roll them because you might get multiple skulls and you might get crits to get extra dice but That's it's right. real good <laughs> wow all right well uh so this is going to be my weekly topic and this is a little bit more of just like a dumb fun one i uh saw a, a meme about this and i'm shamelessly going to steal it but alter it slightly for for you know what we're talking about so uh the meme was a star wars reference and it was if you're trapped in a mall for 24 hours and you have to like survive who who would you want to survive against and they had i think darth maul general Grievous. but what i'm gonna ask you guys is you are trapped in the mall with one member of the sinister six which member of the Sinister Six do you pick to be trapped in there with? And we'll just go with like more of an OG Sinister Six. The OG Sinister Six? Who's on the OG Sinister Six? So I think it was, it's Doc Ock, Scorpion, Vulture. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to look this up. Uh, I believe Electro? I think Electro is right. All right, here we go. Dr. Octopus, Vulture, Electro, Rhino, Sandman, and Venom. Which of those six would you like to try to survive with in a mall for 24 hours? I have That's an answer. not the original Sinister Six. I just typed in Sinister Six, and this is what popped up. God, I'm going to get flamed. It's no, I, the founding members. Go ahead. Are, are Dr. Octopus. Okay. Electro. Yes. Craven. Yes. Okay. Mysterio. Okay. Sandman. And Vulture. Mysterio is like the... Well, I guess Mysterio is not the, like the, the easiest one. I, I, I would probably pick Mysterio, but he couldn't really mess with you. So. Yeah, that would be the worst one. You think All so? of your worst dreams would hit you. You you would always yeah, be having your worst but Fred, fear. But Fred, he probably not going to kill you. True, I mean, true. Let's assume, uh, okay, well, so let's assume that all of them... Let's assume that all of them are going to murder you. Oh well, that's okay. not even true. Mysterio wouldn't murder you. Well, Sandman, sure. Sandman definitely wouldn't murder you. It's supposed to be. F oh, now you're taking the fun out of it. Because I was gonna say Sandman, because I think deep down he's a decent person. So I have my answer. What's your answer, Fred? Okay, so uh, the only way that I'm gonna survive is if I keep away from them, right? Mm -hmm. And if we're inside of a mall, uh, I think that the person that I can most keep away from is Vulture because he has to be able to fly to traverse, right? He can't just – I mean, I guess he could fly in straight lines down hallways and stuff, but we're in an interior building. He would have a hard and, time getting you in J.C. Penney, right? Exactly. I would hide in like a, a a carousel of clothes, and he wouldn't be able to find me. Okay, I like that. I I think I actually agree with that. That's my answer. Okay, I'm yeah. still going with Sandman because I know he's not going to kill me. He's going to kill you, God damn it! He's going to smother you in sand. Nah, it's Sandman, but you. Uh, <laughs> nah. it, it, the circumstances are is that you uh, uh, unknowingly uh, caused him to to kill his entire family. And now he is entirely on a murder spree. There you go. Fred knows how to play the game. He knows how to have fun with it, Brad. You're too logical. Too logical. You're too logical, man. You just got to have fun. What's your answer, Jared? Or I was, is it the same as mine? So I was originally going to pick Rhino. And okay. my reasoning for that was that, like, he, he can tear everything up. But if I can get far enough away from him or, like, crawl and, like, 
the ceiling or something like that. Like, try to find something small to, like, get into and then be quiet. I feel like he just rampages enough to where, like, he wouldn't calm down enough to be able to find me. That would be my thought process. But you made a really good point about him not being able to fly in, like, in your fucking Penn Station or something. So maybe I'll just, I'll just hide in, in something small. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. And then Brad is going to try to play, you know. Sandman. Chess. He's going to get ch- chess in the food court with Sandman. He's going to, me and you are going to be running and hiding. He's going to be befriending his, uh, his killer. So. All right. Well, uh, let us know in the comments who you would want to hide with. And if you want to yell at me for, for messing up the censor six a little bit, you're, that's fine too. But take it easy on me. I'm sorry. I'm not a comic book guy. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, um, I guess, uh, I don't really have anything else unless you guys like to move on to, uh, I've, I've got something. Yeah, uh, go so talking about Rhino, mm-hmm. uh, there's something that we've got to correct. Uh, oh not shit. Correct, yeah. We got to talk gotta, over this. Thank you. Right. Uh, we, we know the Rhino cards and we've known them for a couple weeks and we haven't talked about them. <laughs> I have those pulled up on Cerebro and I, I forgot to skip over yeah. them. So I'll save the spider woman cards for when we talk about spider woman, but all right, so uh, Rhino, he has uh, two cards that we're going to be taking a look at. One is Rhino in a China Shop. It's unaffiliated and active. Rhino may play this card at the beginning of his activation. The next attack Rhino makes this activation adds dice equal to the combined size of all terrain features destroyed this activation. At the end of this activation, Rhino suffers two damage. So, uh, makes an attack this activation... And adds dice equal to the combined size of all train features destroyed this activation. So one of the things that I asked, and one of the things that I think, t- to me, this seems like some of the, the best play, is if you can get him within one of, like, a good terrain feature, so, like, size 3 or something like that, at least, and uh, play Smash. Yeah. You will, oh, my gosh. It'll double up the dice, so you'll get the, the dice from the Smash card. And you also get the dice from the Rhino and a, and a China Shop card. So Smash is like, I think it's it's really cheap. It's only like one or two. I think it's like two. And then this is free. Uh, you just play it at the beginning of the activation. So for two power, you could potentially add six dice <laughs> uh, to his next attack, which is prob- bananas. Probably. Is bananas. Yeah, like if you can somehow hold, like if you don't have a lot of terrain destruction on the board, uh, him playing this, you know, toward the end of the game can, you know, win it with like. I mean, I mean, I've seen Helios lasers shit the bed. Clearly, you know what I mean. So, <laughs> yeah, it happens. But like this can this can secure you like that winning days or KO that you need, or you know, it can put somebody on their back foot early on uh, by just rolling a bucket of dice at them and uh, yeah, you know I mean, getting an early yeah. days. So, I think this you, card is staple. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. With, uh, with Smash, uh, give it if if Smash gives you six. Does, he has a throw, also a terrain. Does he have a terrain throw? Hold on, I haven't I haven't thought about Rhino for a little bit, uh, but I think he does. But uh, also he has that superpower where he can move. Uh, he he moves medium. Yep. And uh, it increases his dice by two, so you can increase it by another two without expending a uh, without expending a. a an action. Yep. Uh, yeah. So if like you do that, like let's say that he gets dazed, on like the clapback turn, if he's able to do all that, I mean he can hit just so hard. Like I don't know. I like this card. I think that if you take him, this one, this one really makes your ten. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, he has a terrain throw where he can throw a size four. Yep. So if you and it costs three power. Uh, so let's say for instance you have eight power sitting on Rhino. At the beginning of, a, of an activation, you, you could throw a size four, then move, uh, uh, spend three power to move yourself to close enough to a size three to use smash, and then attack someone, and you would be rolling 10, uh, 12 additional dice on top of your normal dice pool. It would be 12. And, and you might be destroying terrain on that move. Right. That push. Oh, oh yeah. You're right. Yeah. Oh, you're so right. you could potentially like you know throw a size like it, the, now clearly we're in like 
you know, best case Christmas land, but like you could throw the size four, probably depending on your target, get a daze because size four, you know, can consistently get days. So you throw the size four, you get the days, you do all the other stuff, you add the 12 dice to what is this? Like if you just do a regular attack, what is that? Like five? So 17, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So then you, you move and then you take like a 17 power clap at somebody. I mean, that's just like, that's such a, like, yeah, like, so that's like really, that specifically, like what you're talking about is like, you know, overkill for a lot of characters. Like this card by itself is probably enough to like, like if you throw and then play this card, that's probably enough to like, you know, get your KO on something. But that right there puts you in like taking out one of these six to eight threat crazy characters like a dormammu like a thanos you know what i mean like th this one will, yeah yeah for all, on a four, four third character and you know one to two tactics cards that will like take him out and i think that that's really good and spider foes in general i mean it, they they have a little bit of wiggle room on like tactic card play yeah they do so this can be something that you decide to bust out if you see one of those like high power threats you know like hulkbuster or something like that so i love this card i think it gets stapled to them so, well, you, you haven't talked a whole lot, Brad. What do you think? Uh, I have a list with uh, Rhino in it, and I'm not taking this card. Really? Yeah. That's surprising. All he right. is he, he he's a splash he, character will, that will sometimes get played, but plays into the faction really well. Okay. And um, this card's just not quite what I'd be looking for in a Rhino card, because it's... There's like four automatic takes, mm -hmm. and it's a faction where I'm not even playing both of my restricted cards every game. I got you. All I right, take fair, it. This, fair is, enough. Yeah. Uh, this is not Spider Foes that you're talking about. No, this is not Spider Foes I'm talking about. Okay. Right. He's in my Weapon X list. They've got, uh, they've got two leadership cards and two in faction, in faction cards that are so good. Yeah, you can't definitely. not take them. Yeah, they do. All right, so let's take yeah. a look. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was about to say, there's another card that we need to talk oh, about, yeah. too. <laughs> so, yes, this is a robbery. It is also unaffiliated. It is active. <laughs> oh, shit, excuse me. Um, It says, if it is Rhino's activation, he may spend two power to play this card. Choose an enemy character within one that is holding an objective token. The chosen character drops any objective tokens it is holding, and then Rhino then throws the chosen character medium. That's incredible. For two power, you drop the unobjective token, which he can then probably pick up, and then he throws the character medium. No size restriction, just chucks him. Medium, of all things, too. So, yeah. I mean, it's an amazing card. Both of these cards make Rhino even better, yep. like substantially better. Yep. This card made the list. <laughs> yeah, like this card is amazing. Like, it's just, yeah. both his cards are so on point, and it's great to see. Like really good character specific cards that are really making you consider, you know, what you're bringing. So let's go. Let's go back one step to this is a china shop. If mm -hmm. Rhino has ten power at the start of his activation, he can do all that stuff you already said. Plus, play this is a robbery and throw that character medium into a piece of terrain that will break. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Yeah, like, if you're just one to, like, I mean, may, and maybe it's all right. It's, like, everything, like, three cards probably seems like a meme. But if you want to just, like, fucking meme away and Rhino gets days and he sits on 10 power, I mean, just go to town. Have the most fun ever. Have a blast. All right. Also, so, uh, Smash is for all his attacks that turn, not just the first one. Yeah, so you can. Yeah, like you can throw something. So you'll get those extra dice, the Smash extra dice. Yep. Uh, the whole time. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you if you take that medium move, uh, from the super power, and then you can get in range to like smack two people. That's like a seventeen dice attack followed by like a nine dice attack. Or an yeah. eight dice attack, so that's crazy. Plus, you threw a size four at somebody. So, all right. Well, uh, I guess we can move on to Spider Woman now. Unless you guys have anything else, you guys are good. I think that's it. All right, let's, let's talk about Spider Woman. 
So, Spider Woman, aka Jessica Drew, she has a 4 3 3 stat line. She is 6 stamina, coming in at 4 threat, size 2, and a long uh, mover. And on her injured side, she goes down to 5 stamina instead of 6. So, uh, would you like to read her attack suite, Fred? Sure thing. Uh, her first attack. Uh, hold on just a second. I'm sorry. It's not. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, it is an energy attack called Bioelectric Strike. It is range three. It throws five dice and it has zero cost. Uh, it has the normal builder rules and it has wild neuro disruption. Before damage is dealt, uh, for each wild in the attack roll, the defending character gains one of the following special conditions poison, shock, or stun. That is good. Uh, yeah. Uh, her next attack, her spender, is called Intoxicating Blast. It is also in energy. It is range two. It throws seven dice and costs three power to play. And then uh, it has wild sensory overload. If the target character has the poison special condition before damage is dealt, this character may advance the target character short. And then after this attack is resolved, the target character drops all objective token it is holding. Very good. Very good. All right, so uh, do you want to take the superpowers, Brad, or do you want me to do it? I'll, I'll do the... Active and non. Reactive. Okay. Yeah. Good. I don't fly, I glide. Active superpower costs two. You place her within two of her current position once per turn. Interrogate, reactive, three... At the start of the cleanup phase, if this character is within two of one or more day's enemy characters, it may use this superpower. Its controlling player increases the amount of VPs they score from crisis cards during this cleanup phase by one. All right, Ooh. and then she has three passive superpowers, and it's been uh, it's been a bit since we've actually seen this combination. And uh, quite frankly, if you ask me, it's one of the strongest combinations uh, in the game as far as superpowers go. But she has Martial Artist. When this character is defending against physical or energy attack, a physical or energy attack, targeting it from within two, this character adds blanks in its defense roll to its total successes. And then she also has Stealth, so characters must be within three of this tar of this character to target it with attack. So range four to five, you're not doing anything to her. Uh, and then range two, uh, uh, she, she's counting blanks, so it's pretty good there. And then finally she has Immunity Poison and Wall Crawler, so... Uh, no attacks, no abilities change on her injured side, only the, the stamina change. So, yeah, Spider-Woman, a.k.a. Jessica Drew. I guess before, well, we can talk, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and talk about her before we cover her cards. So, but we'll cover her cards for review. So, why don't you go ahead, Brad? What, what do you think about Spider-Woman? Uh, I think she's absolutely great. And um, I was a little on the fence about this pack because I like Venom. Agent Venom as a character in the comics, but he, I didn't immediately see a place to put him in one of my lists. So I was like, I want him, but like I'll hold off. I think Spider Woman is going to make some of my lists immediately. She's so good. She has energy attacks, which most of my lists don't have a lot of. I love the interrogate. Interrogate. I love the long move. Um, I like the builder she has a lot the spender it's just it works for secures and extracts yeah you can advance them off a of secure or you can make them drop you can do both um i mean that's voodoo levels of control right there i like that she has a place i'm probably gonna put her in x-men i mean l listen to this how you you think that martial arts and stealth is great if they attack her outside of range two, so she doesn't have martial arts, she'll have cover. Cover. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> that's really good. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Really good. I think she works very well in the X-Men. And I'm, and it's, it's a high hurdle to get in my X-Men list. If you're not a mutant or mutant adjacent, like juggernaut, I think she's going to make it. Like, I love her so much. All right. What about you, Fred? What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, everything on this card is great. Uh, she has easy access to giving out stun and shock, which are just really great powers to be able to give. Uh, I, uh, there is, we don't know her affiliations yet, and there's a possibility. We've got a pretty that, good guess. 
Yeah, there's a possibility that she could be Hydra affiliated. If she's Hydra affiliated, uh, her working with Baron Strucker would be really great. Like uh, with the synergy of poison and her being immune to poison because Baron Strucker just gives everyone close to him poison when he uses his certain his superpower. That's that could and then she has the the uh her spender which works with poison. <laughs> like yep. this is it's it, I I think that that would be a really good combination. I think that she's really really good. Uh, uh it should be stated that she has a pretty poor stamina pool of six and five. Yep. And her defenses are good, and she's got a lot of defensive tech. So I yeah. think that she, she's got the survivability even more than, like, that stamina, that low stamina will be relevant, but not as relevant as on characters that don't have the same tech that she does. Yep. Well, I, I look at her, and I just cannot think... Like stop thinking about like uh, like what she does for like web warriors. So like I'm not a uh, like a huge web warrior player, so maybe you know my perception is a little misplaced. But I mean, I just I look at shit and I'm like, what would frustrate me if I was playing against it? And everything on her card seems like it would frustrate me to like play against with like the combination I... of like her and Miles making you drop stuff, especially with the new scenarios that have been rolled out. Go ahead, I have a I have a hot take. Okay. If she is affiliated Web Warriors, Web Warriors have a new core. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Miles, Gwen, and Spider Woman. Yeah. But that's still Venom still gets played, but he is not the first forward drop you go for. I mean, she is an excellent Ooh. forward Ooh. that plays exactly into what Yeah. That they want to do. And that's still only ten points. Yeah. So you can still play Venom, who who has been doing fine in Web Warriors beforehand. You can still take yeah. all these uh, splash pieces that you want and have a really good four. Just, but yeah, the intoxicating blast. I mean, you guys have already touched on like what she can do as far as control. But the stealth, uh, having two characters with stealth, I guess when you when you have that much in your team, it, it makes Gwen feel a little bit more bad <laughs> because she's like <laughs> one of the only two targets, you know, two or three targets that's on the field. <laughs> So that makes her feel a little sad, uh, and she doesn't have any kind of like innate defense tech. But other than that, um, yeah, it's just like it just makes that team so much harder to deal with because they're 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 placing, you know, they're they're not hard to kill if you can really get your hands on them. But she's going to be slippery to get a hold of and actually get around like any of her tech. And then even if you're hitting her within three, she's going to have the Miles leadership reroll, so she's still going to be you know at least rerolling one. Um, and then the interrogate, like, that really just, like, <sighs> she doesn't have, you know, a lot of superpowers. I feel like, though, you are going to want to do quite a bit of, like, intoxicating blasts, uh, clearly because that's such a good, like, spender. Yeah. And it plays into to the control suite that the spiders want. But if you're sitting on, like, a lot of power, if she's been dazed, I mean, them having, like, an extra way in cleanup to, like, score another point... It just, I don't know, it just plays so well. So I i like her. Uh, I specifically like her clearly in Web Warriors. I think that's, it, it's just, she's, in Web Warriors to me, she she's definitely an A character. Whether or not that's the rating that she gets is a different thing. But I, I think that she's great. So, uh, But unless anybody has any final comments, like, oh, no, cards. Oh, no, don't you dare skip the cards we again. The Here we go. Cards. All right. <laughs> She has double agent. This is unaffiliated and it is reactive. At the start of the activation phase, an allied spider woman may spend two power to play this card. Choose an enemy character. The next time the chosen character gains an activated token, remove an activated token from spider woman. Uh, so she can go twice. She can go twice. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty I, good. Think the only downside to this is that your opponent will know that you are not going to daze that character until after it has gone. Yep. That, now, and then you also risk I, priority control if that's something that you're yeah, wanting. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you want to say something else? Oh, I was just going to say um, 
that in I'd say probably half of her factions that's not gonna the whole you know they're not gonna date you thing isn't really a downside like spiders aren't gonna date you anyway so Mm -hmm. yeah I I really like it I think you know maybe you can find a place for the 10 two power is really cheap to like let her go again uh spiders do typically I mean sometimes they do want to go last so they can pull people off of points and do stuff so like if you're really wanting to like maybe save another character and like just double go with her before like maybe like a Gwen or somebody that can pull somebody off of a point and then really like secure something. So if you want to like make Gwen like your last activation of, of the round, uh, that could be, you know, something to kind of play with. Um, other than her spender, she doesn't have like any web lines or anything like that. So I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sold on it, but because she doesn't use a web line, she glides. Yeah, so I see what she did there. Uh, <laughs> she also has on patrol, and this makes me think that she's going to be a force affiliated. Yeah, uh, but this she is... could also be Avengers, but I don't think they're going to put her in Avengers. Okay, uh, this is on patrol, unaffiliated, reactive. An allied Spider Woman or allied Carol Danvers may spend two power to play this card during the power phase. So kind of neat that this card is coming in this box, but you're getting a second character use out of it if you like to play Carol. This round, whenever an enemy character interacts with or picks up an objective token, both Carol Danvers and Spider Woman may advance short. I actually really like this card for for Captain Marvel, uh, because then that puts you in like her her range for. Her. <laughs> Uh, range if she's binary she's going to be shooting you sometimes uh captain marvel wants to like turret a little bit and be like blasting you with full rerolls so i actually probably like this a little bit better on her than spider woman but again that puts spider woman in like range to do some of her fun tricks so what do you guys think yeah it's nice it's nice and it is uh, i think you you said it it's better for carol danvers than it is for spider woman why not but, both? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Why it's not? It's real both? great if you got both in your list. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you if you have both of them, then they're they're all they're going all the time. So I mean, if she is a force, I think that she would probably be a decent a force character. Yeah, so. I think she would play really well in them. Yep, they're just not very popular right now. All right, so I guess we can go on to grading. So uh, we'll start with you, Fred. Uh, what would you give Spider Woman, aka Jessica Drew? Uh, I want to give her a high A. Okay. An A, like not quite an A plus, but uh, the highest of A's. Up there, like a ninety nine percent. Okay. What about you, Brad? You know, I was gonna say A, but after Fred went and made sure he said not A plus, I'm going A plus. Oh man! All right, I feel attacked. Ah, uh, someone would love me. <laughs> see, maybe I'm I'm being the negative one. I was actually just gonna go B plus. You don't think she's splashable? Here, here's the thing. All right, um, she is in the same category of models as miles Mm -hmm. voodoo black cat and they those models are not as good as they used to be but they're still really good yeah they're still really good and she's closer to a voodoo than she is a black cat because she can affect secures and and she can gain an extra vp like she's good she can get an extra vp the thing is like she has a wild for sensory overload and voodoo just is like let me put this token on you <laughs> right yeah so, he, she's not as good as voodoo I'll yeah give you that. yeah yeah but voodoo's like she a real he's like a well he was a highest so i guess that's up for debate now whether or not he makes yeah he, he was yeah ah. like, i didn't say s yeah I said A plus though because she deserves an A. You okay? I tell you what, I'll give her an A minus. You talked me into an A minus from a B plus. So okay, I that will average is A. I'm I'll go. That. I'll go there. All right, so uh, we're pretty high on Spider Woman. Uh, you know, I think personally, and you know, you can take this with a grain of salt, but I think that if you're a Web Warriors player, I think that you are getting pretty excited about this box. I think that it has. 
I, I think that this is a great character to add to your collection and, and to your roster. So, but, Yeah, 100%. All right, well, uh, I think now that we've graded her, I, we can move on to Brad giving some comic books. So go ahead, Brad. Hey, you won't believe this, but I forgot it. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have Spider-Woman <laughs> comics for you. I've got two. Um, I tried to... So one of these writers is very well known for writing her and writing some of her best stories. So I tried to come, I tried to find two stories that weren't written by the same person. So if you're a Spider Woman fan and I skipped over uh, Brian Michael Bendis story that you love, uh, it's because I didn't want to put two Brian Michael Bendis stories on here. But I went with uh, Spider Woman Origin from 2005. This is Brian Michael Bendis. It's also art by Jonathan Luna and Joshua Luna. And this is a modern retelling of Jessica Drew's origin. Um, it's from the time from her pregnant mom getting exposed to radiation from Jessica's dad's spider DNA experiments, which is how she ended up with spider powers uh, to her mom dying and her dad abandoning her to her joining Hydra to her eventually joining shield. It tells her whole origin story in a modern way. Um, so, I mean that that'll give you her whole background. And then I pick something that, um, so one of my problems is that they're probably going to put her in web warriors. Mm hmm. And I don't feel that that's warranted. But when I was doing research, I came across Spider Woman Volume 5 from 2014. Uh, writers Dennis Hopeless Hallam, uh, artist for at least the first bit of it, is Greg Land. And this is the comic where she teams up with the other spider people to fight the bad guys, which are called the Inheritors. They eat spider people. Oh my God. She gosh. teams up. Yeah. They, they travel through dimensions and they eat uh, spider totems. And they try to eat Peter Parker. Jeez. That's what uh, yeah. the comic Spider-Verse is about. It's trying to stop these, like, vampires from eating them. If you, uh, if you but... told me that we were going to do this podcast and we were talking about Spider-Woman, at some point we would, you know, hard left into cannibalism, I'd be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it happened. Um <laughs> But she teams up with Silk and other people that you would know. So this this is a strong argument for her actually being in Web Warriors. So I thought that would be a good comic to recommend for people. Right. So that they, they, like me, will feel better about her being in Web Warriors. All right. So I've got a question. What is yeah. with all of the bad experiments that are being done with radioactive spiders? Like, is there some scientist who is the most unethical and the most unsafe with his spiders that that all the teenagers of of the local city get infected with spider powers? Like, yes. what is happening? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I'm looking up his real name. I think it's Miles something. But uh, almost all of that. I think gets traced back to Miles Warren, who is the Jackal. Um, he, I think he's connected to all of the spider, the radioactive spiders. I know for sure he's the one that keeps cloning people like Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy and stuff. Um, so I think all that is related to Miles Warren, who worked for Oscorp. And that's why uh, I believe, even in the comics, Peter Parker was at Oscorp when he got bit by the radioactive spider. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think. Boy, OSHA would have a field day at Oscorp, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, he's he bribing whatever OSHA person supposed to check in <laughs> on them to like just not come. <laughs> Yeah, I think in I think in that universe, Oscorp probably owns like OSHA. It, it oh, the O in OSHA stands for Oscorp. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So normally, Brad, uh, 
Brandon would have, you know, the uh, the the Ross recommendation. Uh, it's on to me to do it, and I'm gonna be bland. He he's the one that was the creative takes. You played with web boys. I I did a creative take earlier. All right, go ahead. What was it? I did. It was play player with X Men. Player with X Men. That's right. You did. Okay. Yeah. I, so I think she fits really well in like a Storm X Men list. I like that. A yeah. modern Storm X Men list. So you guys at home, you should listen to Brad's advice on Player X Men. I bet it would be good. So. I'm going to try it. All right, Fred, uh, you want to take us home with your non sequitur? Yeah, sure. Uh, I saw a movie uh, this past weekend uh, called Megan. Oh, uh, how was that? And, uh, it was better than it has any right to be. Okay. It was a lot better than I expected. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a story of a toy designer who uh, her niece – has a horrible accident and her parents are killed this happens in the very first scene so i'm not spoiling anything and part of her trying to happens in the trailer so yeah 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 yeah. uh and part of her trying to connect and uh look after her niece is she builds her a toy which is a robot doll uh but that robot doll begins to take on more responsibilities than it's acceptable and and including uh protecting her from bullies in very violent ways (laughs) uh it is uh there are sequences in this movie where i genuinely tear up teared up because they were actually quite heartwarming and and very effective like this was not this is uh, you know i went in expecting a horror comedy and it is a horror comedy. It's it, and it sets that tone immediately. In the very first scene, there it is a comedy sequence of a Furby style toy that is pretty hysterical. And then imagine my surprise when there's a heartwarming sequence of the doll comforting a girl whose parents died. Like, okay. It, it, it's a very good movie. It's it's a movie that is going to do well and it's going to have sequels. I know that uh, because... I uh, I saw a clip of like the dance in the hallway. I was like, well, that's, that's unsettling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dance in the hallway. And then uh, the dance ends with her grabbing a paper slicer yeah. and ripping it off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I was, like, I was like, that's, I don't like the way that, that kid's moving. So. Yeah. Uh, special shout out to Thomas Corinti, uh, if you're listening. Uh, he's our newest backer. He literally just backed. Oh. Bro. Whoa! How like about that? Live, Patria. live. <laughs> so thank you. He, if he is listening right now, he knows exactly when we recorded this. That's true. So what did you say his name was? Thomas. Uh, yeah, Thomas. For everyone Thomas else, Corinti. For everyone else listening, you guys should be more like Thomas Corinti. If you're not helping Brad on Patreon, shame on you. <laughs> thank you, Thomas. All right. Uh, well, thank you guys uh, for joining us as always. Uh, we should be back next week with uh, Better Bill. Shit. I, it keeps slipping me every time. So hopefully, uh, again, we're recording this on Saturday. By the time we go to record, hopefully um, his some of his tactics cards get spoiled. I mean, I'm not holding my breath, but hopefully, yeah. we, have, hopefully we have a little bit more. So, But yeah, thank you guys we're, so much. We're going to we're going to BRB with BRB. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys have a great night. Bye.